Good morning. I don't know what the weather's like when you are watching this assembly, but as I film it, which is Thursday, it is a wonderful day. It's really hot and warm and sunny and a blue sky and it's fantastic. However, I can't see a thing. So I'm going to take off the sunglasses so I can see the screen. Today's assembly is all about resilience. How to be resilient. And let's start by thinking about the definition of resilience. Resilience means going back to its original shape. It's all about recovery. So I've got this bar. It's not a great example, to be honest with you. I did ask Mrs. Whiteside, but she let me down terribly. However, if I squeeze this bar, it will do it very quickly. It goes back to shape. Physically, that means it is resilient. Now, I want to try and relate that, if I can, to us in our lives. And I want to talk through three things. I want to talk through physical resilience. Then I want to talk through academic resilience. And finally, I want to talk about mental resilience, so mental health and mental well-being, all of those kind of things which are always important. But I think particularly uh, at this time, and also once we're considering coming back to school and getting ourselves organised. I'd like to start by considering physical resilience. Now, for me, I'm not a very good runner. I can't stand running at all. I have to say, during lockdown, I have run. I've run nearly every day. But I hate it. I'm not very good and I'm very slow. Now runners really impress me and I want to talk through a few of them. I want to start by talking about three runners called Seb Cole, Steve Olvet, and Steve Cran. Now these guys are middle distance runners and their distance is about 800 metres which is twice around the, uh, the track or 1500 metres which is nearly four times around the track. The track is 400 metres so 1500 is 100 meters shy of four times around the track. Now many say this is one of the most difficult distances because it's not long distance so you don't run at a pace and get into a rhythm and go at a slower pace. It's more like sprinting for a further distance so it's really difficult and you have to demonstrate immense resilience. Now in the 1980s, particularly during the Moscow Olympics in 1980, these three runners so these are British runners were the best in the world and they were winning the gold medals at this distance. And I was quite young at that point, uh, but I do remember them uh, watching them a little bit. And the one that stands out to me is Seb Cole. So the three of them, I think all that came first, but the three of them uh, were beating each other at different times. So they all had to show the determination to beat their competitors. Which is a bit like I was talking about last time, wasn't I? About being different to and better than everybody else. Well, they had to have that mindset. Seb Cole ran a little bit like Mo Farah, who you've probably more likely heard of. So Seb Cole, in a race, particularly 1500, so that's nearly four times around the track, will start at the, the back of the pack and just really calmly, and it looks easy, uh, jog behind them. And then when it came to maybe 300 metres to go or 200 metres to go, so that's the bend, you would watch it overtake runner after runner after runner and eventually get to the front. And you'd have a really long stride and show immense resilience. Because during that run, he would have suffered such pain, but he didn't quit. And nor did Ovette and nor did Cram. They kept going. I want to move on to Mo Farah. So I, as you know, I'm a big football fan. And I have to say 1999, when United won the treble, was just amazing. A bit like, was it 2012, 13, when City and Aguero scored for City fans and scored in the last minute and won the league. How amazing that was. And for Liverpool fans this season, when Liverpool won the league, how amazing that would be. So I'm a big football fan. But one of my favourite days of sport, the day that was amazing for me, was an event called, or uh, a day called Super Saturday. I was so excited. London were hosting the Olympics, and this was in 2012. And what's the opening ceremony? And then it came to the middle Saturday. Olympics tend to last around two weeks. And the middle Saturday was an athletics day. So there were lots of other events happening, table tennis and badminton, all these events, lots of swimming. But on Saturday, Athletics took the centre stage. Uh, and there's a guy called Greg Rutherford. I think he was first, but I'm sorry if I can't quite remember the correct order. And he did the long jump and unexpectedly he got gold. Wow. Now Mo Farah 
is a long distance runner. Long distance running on the athletics track is 5,000 metres and 10,000 metres. And I think on this Saturday it was the 10,000 metres. And we were all super excited watching the telly. Now, not only is Mo Farah a good runner, he had to show physical resilience in terms of people barging him and that kind of stuff. And at one point he stumbled and he tripped. But a bit like Seb Cobb, he didn't run from the front. And there's different ways of running long distance uh, runs. To be fair, Miss Grimsley knows much more about this than I do because she is a long distance runner. She was a very good long distance runner. However, I like to watch it. So Mount Mo Farah, so he was in the centre of the pack and he'd have been so tired. Goodness me, oh wow, exhausted. People were barging him and it must have been tempting for him to quit. I think, Do you know, this is too hard. Now in the short distance that I run each day, I have to say, all the way through the run, I have to fight quitting because I find it so difficult. And at every stage I think, Do you know, it's too hard this. I want to stop. Does it matter if I stop? Nobody will know. Well, Mo Farah in the Olympic Games would have been exhausted. And he ran towards the middle. And then with a lap to go, you see him overtaking people. Oh, so exciting. And he overtook one after the other. Now, before he knew it, he'd gone from 10th place. And he's up to 5th. And we're all celebrating and cheering. And then he overtakes and goes to 4th. And now he's in the bronze medal position in third and he's on the bend and he goes to second and then eventually he goes to first and him and the other competitor are sprinting after such a, lot, uh, a long run and completely exhausted. But Mo Farah overtakes and runs into first place. How exciting is that? Now on the same day, Jessica Ennis Hill also won her final event to become the gold medal champion of an event called the Heptathlon. Now, Heptathlon, Hept means seven. So, the Heptathlete competes in seven different events over two days, and it must be exhausting. And at the end, Jessica Ennis Hill had shown that she was the best competitor in that, that event. So, the question has to be for me. In athletics particularly, but in all sports, what is it that marks the best from the nearly best? Now, absolutely, absolutely, hard work and dedication and training and talent and all of those things are really important. This is the same in football, it's the same in basketball, it's the same in netball, it's the same in cricket, same in all of those sports. They are absolutely fundamental. But what is also important is resilience. On the day of the event, can you keep going when it's difficult to do so? When it's easy to quit, are you able to keep pushing on and on and on? Because if, like Sebco, like uh, Ovette, like Steve Cram, like Jessica Ennis Hill, like uh, Mo Farah, like Aguero or um, Van Dyke or Rashford or all of these players, Pogba, one of the things that mark them out from the others, they don't quit. They keep going when it's difficult to do so. I'd like to talk now about academic resilience. By academic, I mean all things to do with school in terms of teaching and learning. And I'm talking about the ability to carry on when it's difficult to do so. The ability to give your very best when it's difficult to do so, because this links to resilience. Now, trust me when I say we all have days when we find it difficult. I certainly have days where I find it really difficult to motivate myself for lots of reasons. But I will also say on those days when I go home, something isn't right. I find it difficult whether I'm playing table tennis that evening or doing something else. I find it difficult to feel satisfied with myself because I'm not putting a shift, a proper shift, for whatever reason, during that day. Now, there's lots of reasons why academic resilience might be difficult. For instance, it might be a subject that you don't like. There's lots of subjects that we all don't like, but in life we can't just do the things that we like to do. In life we have to be the best that we can be in all areas of school. Now, I promise you, and I say this over and over again, School is better when you put in a shift. School is more enjoyable when you try. Don't spend your day 
waiting for the lessons, if you like, be it art or music or PE or sports or whatever it is. Don't waste those lessons that are earlier on the day. Make the most of them. Now, it might be a subject that you don't like, but it might also be a subject that you think you're not very good at. And the temptation is to think, well, what's the point? I'm not very good at this. Well, I would say to you, be better. So in terms of, don't spend time looking around at other people. Focus on you being the best that you can be. Now, it could be a lesson that actually you find really difficult. In that case, focus on learning small chunks. Getting better at small things in that lesson. Don't have the mindset, can't do this, don't like this. Have the mindset, do you know, I want to take this on. Seize the day. Be the best that you can be in all subjects. Subjects you don't like, subjects that you think you're not very good at. The other thing that might be difficult is you might think that others are doing better than you. It might be that the person sitting next to you, Miss Grimsley, might be doing better than me at something. That, that won't happen. Or it might be that this side, I don't know, Mr. Edwards is doing better than me at something. However, you get my point. It might be sitting amongst children that are better than you, that you think are better than you at art or music or PE or, or whatever. Just focus on being the best that you can be because you will feel fulfilled. And the reason for that is how you feel inside. Now, in our school, we give lots of rewards. You're more likely to be a head boy or a head girl if you are a resilient person. You're more likely to be house captains if you're the person that keeps going and tries your best. You're more likely to get house points if you're seen to be trying your best in these lessons. However, all of those things are fantastic and I think they're excuse me, great ambitions to have but I don't think they're the reason to be the best that you can be every day. I think the reason to be the best that you can be every day is inside. That you, and I mean this, that you leave at the end of the day thinking to yourself, do you know, I've done my best today. I might not have got all the questions right. I might not have got the task right in writing or art or whatever. But do you know, I know, hand on heart, I did the best that I could. And today, I was the best person that I can be because, and I promise you this, I promise you, life is better when you have that mindset. If you're still awake, well done. We're nearly there. The last part of my assembly is about mental health. And I want to talk about resilience with our well-being and our mental health well-being. Now, this is always important. At King's Road, we've always thought this is important. We certainly think it's important now. And during the times that we're in at the moment where things are so different with learning from home and some are coming, from, uh, 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 some are coming to school and that we're coming back to school in September, but I'll come to that in a minute, it is critical now. It's critical that we're honest and we're open and we make the right choices we look after ourselves. But I tell you this, it will continue to be top of our list from September going forwards. That's why in our school we have so many strategies in place, such as the emojis, the hub that Mrs. Whiteside and other volunteers um, run, our teachers and teacher assistants. We all want to help you if you've got anything to say. Uh, we have heads of house. Do you know, in all areas, in all areas, it's okay to ask someone else for help. I'm going to put a link at the bottom of this clip um, to a YouTube clip about a guy called Derek Redmond. Now, and I'm going back to physical stuff, but I think it links to this because the point I want to make is about sometimes we need others to help us. Uh, Derek Redmond was a 400 metre runner and he had trained his whole life for this one moment. And again, it's in the Olympics and he sets off uh, and then he pulls his hamstring, I think. And that's a, a muscle which I'm holding, even though none of you can actually see what I'm holding uh, in, in the back of my leg, in the back of uh, somebody's leg. Uh, and the hamstring, I think it snapped, has a really bad injury. And he's in anguish. He is in anguish. He's in physical pain and absolute emotional and mental anguish. He is in, I would suspect, one of the lowest points of his entire life. 
He should have stopped, but he showed the physical resilience to keep going when it's difficult. And I'm not saying that's the right thing. If you're injured, it's okay to stop. But in this case, he kept going. And it's quite a, a nice illustration for us. Now, the camera pans to the stand. Uh, and I wasn't going to talk about this, so I'm going off memory here. Uh, and there's a bloke in the stand. And you see, and you're thinking, why is he fighting with the stewards? And eventually, he pushes the stewards out of the way. And he gets onto the track. And if I was showing you this, I'd probably get upset. Because I find it really difficult to watch this. Because I think it's so emotional. And his dad comes. I didn't tell you this. It's his dad. That's why he's jumping over. Because he wants to help his son. And he gets through security. And he puts his arms around his son. And the two of them get over that line together. Let us help each other. Now, if you're a staff member watching this, I mean you as well. I mean me as well. I mean Miss Grimsley. I mean as well. If you're a parent, I mean you as well. If you're a child, if you're a pupil in our school, I mean you. Let us, let us put our arms around you because we're all part of Team KR and help you during the times when you feel so low on resilience. I trust you. I, I trust me when I say we all have those moments. You can look around and you can see people who think they've got it together. They never feel like this. They do. They do. And there's times where we're all going to need help. And actually it comes to sacrifice. So that's a team KR principle. Are you willing to help others? Because sometimes that takes sacrifice. What also takes courage. Are you willing to let others help you? To put their arms around you. And take you over the line. We won't think you're weak. Because we're all there sometimes. We will respect you more. Now I want to give some tips. I think in relation to. Uh, mental health. And resilience okay. Before I do. Let's just think about September. The government have announced. That all pupils are coming back in September. That is music to our ears. We all want that. We cannot wait for Team KR. To be reunited. And year six, uh, you will go on to your next schools in September and it's going to be awesome, awesome for you. Now, the tips that I want to talk through, I've talked about talking to somebody, to be honest, honest to them, but honest to yourself as well. But a couple of last practical tips that will actually help with mental health linked to be healthy. One is eat well. If you eat rubbish all the time, that impacts on your mental health. You feel more like this. Absolutely you do. Whereas, you, whereas if you eat well, then you don't. You have more energy inside you. The chemicals inside your body equip you for each day. You will still have moments where your resilience is low. And you'll still have moments where you'll need somebody else to help you. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is you will be in a better place if you eat better. Now, if you find yourself constantly, I'm talking to adults as well here. If you find yourself constantly in a low state of mood, look at your diet. Look at what you're eating. Are you eating enough vegetables? Are you eating enough fruit? Are you eating too much, uh, too many sweets and chocolate and fizzy drinks and all of this kind of nonsense? Make sure you're eating well because that affects your mindset, that affects your well-being, physical well-being, but it also affects your mental well-being. The other thing, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, is are you being active? I talk to, I, generally I am quite physically active, but I, even though I'm not in the run, I hate the run, I feel exhausted after the run, but generally in life I feel so much better because I am doing this run each day, I'm having an active lifestyle. Now, for me, if I have a day that I call a slobby day, I feel rubbish at the end of it. Now, I must say, at this point, I'm not advocating exercise when you're exhausted. I think rest is really important as well. So, if you are exhausted and need to rest, do rest. But don't rest too much. Don't spend all day, every day, playing games or watching tech. Don't do it. It's just a waste of time. It's not fulfilling. Be active. And I think that's really important. So that's my message in today's assembly. It's all about resilience. 
Now, if you want to talk about any of these things, you can speak to your teachers. That you can speak to me on our school website. There's a button called Comments Clicker, and that's an email that comes to me. Make the most of today. Have a fantastic day.